we, we see it as a combination of factors here. I think inflation clearly is one of them. I mean, we've always been in the, of the view that inflation is likely to be transitory, uh, but I think we need to see just how quickly it does recede, whether it's an immediate drop or uh, something that sort of moves lower gradually over the next few months. So I think that's one clear factor there. But the other one, of course, is, you know, the first six months, uh, we've sort of been in a one-way uh, view of, you know, uh, markets expecting yields to rise. So inevitably, there is some sort of positioning beginning to reverse out, uh, and we think that's not completely done yet. We think that's part of what's sort of driving yields lower as well. Um, and finally, of course, look, it's, it's impossible to sort of ignore, you know, these, these sort of, uh, you know, the fact that economic data can, cannot continue surprising positively because, you know, we're looking at yields through the lens of inflation. That's one lens, of course. The other is to say, look, we've got, you know, growth data that's been, you know, surprising positively uh, pretty much ever since, the, you know, the COVID lows of the market about a year back. Uh, that can't continue indefinitely. And at that, that adjustment process inevitably will mean a dial back in yield. So we think, you know, it'll take obviously, uh, you know, uh, Few weeks, potentially even a couple of months, for this to sort of even out, particularly from a positioning standpoint. Uh, but our view is that you know it's that growth outlook. As long as that stays constructive, that should eventually take over once markets acknowledge that inflation is likely to be largely transitory. Manpreet, coming back to this part of the world, China's a triple R cut. You're very focused on what's happening in China, what the central bank is doing uh, to manage the economy. What do you expect next? Well, I think what what what's next is really to see uh, whether this sort of turn in policy direction uh, sustains. Uh, and one is within the triple R cuts themselves. Historically, you know, we've rarely had one. Usually, we, one would expect a, a, a couple more to follow at least. But also whether that's you know just an easing of the brakes, or do we see sort of an easing of policy uh, on multiple fronts? Because for equity market investors, we think that's particularly key. Uh, this tightening bias has been a key headwind. The question is to what extent is that receding? Um, but equally, look for us, uh, you know that. Uh, Oh, this is important because if it's a change in direction, of course, that may you know, brighten the outlook for equities. Uh, but if not, we still think that still creates a pretty good outlook for corporate bonds as an alternative way of gaining exposure to Chinese corporates. Uh, it may not, we may not get back to the point where you know policy turns, you know, flips 180 degrees the other way. But actually, one outcome of some of the tighter regulation has been, we think, you know, pockets of improvement in credit quality, uh, which, when you look at a much more attractive valuation backdrop, does mean Asia dollar bonds. Uh, you know, we think have started looking more, much more interesting, particularly in the high yield space.